Hello YouTube. Today we're going to start a new series. This is going to be a key concept series. We're going to talk about some things that will help you to understand what's happening on the table and will also set us up for uh, some of the analysis where we will start taking shots that commonly come up in runs and talk about the options for that shot and, and what you can do and what the different paths are and things like that. But in order to do that, there are a lot of things to go over. Uh, today we're going to talk about the rails and how they work. Um, now this is something you don't see uh, and which um, quite often uh, is overlooked. Um, so when you're talking about the rails on the pool table, okay, let's say there's a, a rail there, right? The common misconception is that it's straight geometry and its angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So if this is a 45 degree angle, then this is a 45 degree angle. Well, that's actually not true. It's not true at all. This is wrong. The way that the rails work is that you have the rail and a ball hits the rail. The rail compresses and it doesn't compress equally. It's, it's not it, just a curve where the ball hits. What it is is it's a sharp curve up here and then a lessening curve going back. Okay? Now, <clears throat> why is this important to know? Why do you need to know that the rail is bending in and it's not a perfect curve? Well, the reason is because this area exerts a lot of pressure. This area exerts a little pressure. Okay, now, we've seen through other videos and Dr. Davis talked about it and other people have talked about when you're banking a ball, if you hit it soft, it tends to bounce way out. So let me draw another angle here. So soft tends to go like this, right? But if you hit the same shot hard, it comes off at this angle. Why does it do that? It's because of the compression of the rail. You're digging deeper into the rail. You're getting pressure on the leading edge of the cube of the ball. So the front edge of the ball is getting a lot of pressure and there's very little on the back, which means that it's banking off of this to come out straight. That's why you can take a shot that's at an extreme angle like this and by hitting it hard, make it go cross side. Not through English, not through spin, but just by hitting it hard. So you can see that that angle will take you to the other side of the pocket. You're not going to make it hitting that straight. However, if we hit it hard, it actually will. We can hit this hard and it will flatten out into that side. Okay. That's pot, I, and I didn't have any side spin on it. You saw the cue ball did not spin. That's because of this effect. I'm hitting it hard, it's compressing the rail, which makes it come up shorter. It makes it come on that shorter line. So what you just saw me do is that we had the side pocket here. We have this side pocket there. We had the ball here. We had the cue ball here. And if you draw a line through the center of them, where I hit was there, and it should have hit across, but it went in. And the reason it went in is because the rail bent right here in that kind of teardrop, teardrop shape thing, which caused it to come off at a shallower angle and go straight into the center of the pocket. That happened because of the rail. Well, why else is this important? Well, that's also important because it affects how your English works. So, if I'm hitting into the rail 
at a 30 degree angle. Let's say this is 30 degrees. And the, so, so the natural rebound would be about 30 degrees, right? But I put inside spin on it. I put, uh, in this case, left hand English on it. That causes the, the key ball to come out, right? It causes it to shorten up. And we can see that pretty, pretty easily. If I go through here with no English, through the second diamond, I'm aiming at the second diamond. Let's see where that hits. Okay, it hit, the it hit going into the second diamond here, right? If I put inside English on it, and I hit it into there, and I hit it soft, it still hits just, it's, it's just a little bit of a shorter angle that comes out to here, maybe a couple inches down the rail. <clears throat> Same shot, but hitting it hard, causing the rail to compress, now I can do some pretty cool stuff. See how far over that came? That was way out here. Just by hitting it harder. Same shot, same everything. Same English, same everything. But I hit it hard. The harder you hit it, the further out it comes. And by the way, you can also... There's, a, there's another effect that comes into play that we'll talk about in a second, where you can make that even wider. Um, well, again, the reason it does that is because I'm putting inside spin, okay, which opposes the direction of the ball, and it causes it to, as it compresses, it's spinning off of this, not a flat rail like this, okay? So we're actually spinning off of the compression, which is a pretty cool idea. Now, where I'm going with this is, if you are less than a 30 degree angle, okay? So let's say a 15 degree angle. You're, you can't compress that rail enough to make that effect happen. And so what happens is, Again, we're going to use inside English. We can go off 15. But what happens is it comes out and it hits the second rail. And that's, this is greater than a 30 degree angle. 30 degrees plus. I know I'm writing sideways. Um, but this is greater than a 30 degree angle. And so that's where that spin will take effect. Okay, so now I'm going to be hitting a very, very thin angle. I'm aiming at the second diamond again. Okay, so if I hit that with no English, soft, it's coming out directly towards this corner pocket. If I set the same angle up, center of the pocket, half a diamond in, and I put inside English on it, and I hit it... It doesn't actually matter how hard I hit it because it's going to spin down and then spin back. You see that? The English didn't take effect until here. It hit in the same place on this rail that the previous shot hit, but then instead of coming out towards that corner pocket, it actually went back towards this rail. And, that's because, and, and that holds true anywhere that you have a 15 degree or a 30 degree or less angle. 30 degrees, it comes straight up the table. After that, it starts releasing out. So, okay. Actually, that may be exactly the same angle. Okay, comes right to the corner of the side pocket. We put inside English on it. And again, it didn't change where it hit, where it made contact with this rail. What it changed was the angle coming after the second rail. That's really important. Understanding that that spin 
on a shallow angle doesn't take effect on the first rail, it takes effect on the second rail. That's the, the point I'm trying to get, off, get across. So if we shoot with more than a 30 degree angle with inside spin, okay, I'm going to shoot this right here, then the effect takes effect on the first rail. If we shoot it with less than a 30 degree angle to the rail, then it doesn't take effect until the second rail. So here's, here's more than 30 degrees. See that? It took effect right on the first rail. See that again. See how it's taking effect on the first rail? It's the, the inside English is called, causing it to come short. Okay, now we are talking about inside English here on the rails. Um, the other effect this curve has is that it adds English. It adds running English to your shot. So here's my curve. This is the lot side of the curve. We're going to be coming into it. Direction travels that way. Um, so when the ball hits, and this is this is the little side. Okay, so that's that's a really bad curve. Let's do this. Okay, kind of, sort of, maybe. I am not an artist, as you may tell. Okay, so. On this side, the rail on the leading edge, the rail is compressed a lot. That means that when it spring, when the rail springs back, it's going to spring back pretty hard here, but not here. Okay, so what does that do? So, as your ball hits the rail, okay, so here's your ball hitting the rail. That means that it's going to apply resistance to the ball here a lot of resistance and it's only going to apply a little bit here which means that it's going to force the force of, of the rail expanding is going that way through the cue ball which means that the cue ball is going to pick up additional rotation in this direction okay so if the ball's picking up additional rotation that's not going to take take effect on this first rail. What it is going to do is when it comes, let's say that this is coming at this angle, okay, when it hits this rail, it's going to spin wide. It's not going to come in and go in the original direction. It's going to spin wide. And we can take advantage of that fact because the funny thing is, so these are additive, which means that when you see me shoot that three rail to the corner shot, what that means is that this three rail shot doesn't have to be perfect. Why doesn't it have to be perfect? Well, it doesn't have to be perfect because that action on the rails means that if I hit this with too much English, the rail is actually going to slow that English. And if I hit it with too little English, the rail is going to correct it by adding spins. It just has to be close because the rails are going to fix it along the way. Okay? This shot is called self-correcting. And the reason it's self-correcting is because it's coming in at enough of an angle on all three rails for that, uh, for that compression to take effect. Okay, it's going to self-correct. I can shoot this a thousand times and as long as I'm more than 30 degrees going into that rail, my aim point is exactly the same. And it will fix itself if I get it wrong. You see that? As long as it's more than 30 degrees into that rail. When it's less than... Okay, so we need to get there. So when it's less than 30 degrees into the rail, 
um, and I'm going to have a hard time putting this on the camera because you won't be able to see it. So when it's less than 30 degrees to the rail, it no longer corrects as much. You see that? I'm, so I'm actually aiming at my doorknob over there, okay? That's what I'm aiming at. I'm aiming at my doorknob. If I shoot it from here, all of those, all three rails are being hit at more than 30 degrees. It's going to self-correct every time. I can be over here. I'm still more than 30 degrees. It's not the same angle as the rail. This angle was here. This angle is here. So it's more, more of an angle, but it still self-corrects. And it does that because it's more than 30 degrees. But if I take the same shot, if I take the same exact shot, and I make it less than 30 degrees, my aim point has to change because if I use the same aim point, it can no longer correct properly. You see that? More than 30 degree angle, don't care where the ball is, same aim point. I've got to put left hand or right hand spin on it, but it actually was correcting. Um, doesn't matter, more than 30 degrees, same aim point, same, same shot. How about this? That's, that's this angle. So here we were at this angle, here we're at this angle, but because of the rails, it will self-correct. Okay, you see that? The key concept here is that, first of all, the rails are not hard surfaces, they compress. And when they compress, the leading edge in the direction of travel compresses more than the trailing edge, which has a couple of effects. One, uh, the harder you hit it, the more it compresses, the more the difference is between the two sides, which means the shorter the cue ball comes off the rail. Um, and we can, we, can make, we can take that to extremes. Um, let me show you a shot here. We can extend this even further. And we can make it shallower too. Okay, so how do you hit this? How do you make this one from here? Well, the answer is you take advantage of the compression of the rails and you shoot the cue ball way down here with bottom inside English. What we're doing is we're going to draw off of the compressed rail. We're not going to we're not, uh, we're not drawing off the flat rail, we're drawing from this part. And we do that by hitting it hard to compress the rail as much as we can and hitting it with draw so that it will act as if it's drawing off a ball from here. That's the concept. So if you're more than 30 going into this, you're going to be less than 30 on this one, which means that your English holds here and then doesn't on, on the short rail. If you're less than 30, then your English doesn't take effect here, it takes effect here. So remember that, more than 30, it takes effect on the, more than 30 into the first rail, it takes effect on the first rail. Less than 30 on the first rail, it takes effect on the second rail. That's the rule. All right, so here's how this looks, drawing off of the compressed cushion. See that? Let's try it again. I'm compressing the rail and drawing off of the rail. And that only works because the rail compresses. So that's, that's how the rails work. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. I will be doing more of these key concepts uh, in the lead up to doing some things about common shots and, uh, that come up in various games and how to solve the problems. All right, with that, take it easy. We'll see you next time.